So we're now going to be adding database support to our small MVC application. And to do this, we're going to be using Laravel's Eloquent ORM, which is an object relational mapper. Now that sounds a little bit more complicated than it is, but basically uh, if you've used Laravel, you'll completely understand how good Eloquent is. But it's a really easy way to work with your database, including things like relationships, uh, accessing things, creating records, etc. But you can head over to the Laravel documentation to actually read more about this and all of the functionality here you'll be able to use within your uh, MVC application. Now you're going to need Composer because we're going to be requiring in the database module of Illuminate, which is Laravel's framework, like the core of the framework. So you will need Composer installed so you can head over to your command prompt or terminal and hit Composer and uh, have all access to this. So make sure that's installed beforehand and you'll be able to follow along the rest of this video. So let's just revisit what we've got so far in our MVC application in terms of the models. At the moment we're using the model method which is available uh, within our controller class. And this will basically just pull in and instantiate uh, basically a new instance of that model. And our models are obviously stored under here and at the moment all we have is a, uh, a user model with a public property called name. So at the moment, what's happening within our application is on home and index, we're just passing in Alex into the URL, and this is being substituted here. And the way that's working is it's picking it up here, it's grabbing the model, it's setting that to what I've just passed through to the URL, and then it's loading the view and it's passing in this name here, which under views home index is just saying hello and then whatever the name is. So this is fairly straightforward, but to add database support, you might be a little bit stuck here. Now, Eloquent um, is really easy to actually pull in because we use something called a capsule, which is built specifically to allow you to use this outside of your application. So what we need to do first of all then is actually pull in this as a dependency. Now we're going to be pulling in 4.2 point star uh, so there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can either create a composer.json file within our root directory. So we could create it in here. So we could say new file, save this out as composer.json, and then we can add in the relevant information. But I'm going to be doing this through the command line just so it's a little bit easier. So the first thing, if you run just composer on your command line, you'll, you'll get a list of uh, different commands here. Um, you can see here that we have a search for packages or show information about packages. We already know that the package is called Illuminate Database. So all we need to do here is say Composer Show Illuminate Database. And that will give us information if we just go ahead and get rid of our Composer file there. Like so. And it's saying here that no composer.json found. So it's showing them from Packagist, basically. That's where we were just on that website. So we're going to be pulling in 4.2.star. So all we need to do here is say composer require. You can do obviously require dev, but we're just going to require in illuminate database. And then it asks us which version that we want to pull in. So we're going to say 4.2.star. And that'll pull in that as well as other dependencies it requires. So we can check which dependencies have also been pulled in. If I just close all this off, uh, inside of the vendor folder, which has just been created for us, this contains everything we need. You can see that carbon has been pulled in uh, because when we use dates, so for example, we created our updated date on our database, that pulls in and it's an instance of carbon, it extends carbon. So we can actually use. Uh, carbon, which is a really good PHP date manipulation class. So now that we've got this included in, what do we actually need to do? Well, inside init.php, uh, we're currently loading in the core files that we need. That's app and PHP, uh, app and controller.php. But what we need to do is require in composer autoloader. And let's do this now. That's going to give us the functionality uh, of what we've just pulled in with composer. So this is the autoload.php file. It just pulls in all your dependencies. So all we need to do here is go back one and we need to say vendor autoload.php like so. So nothing will change here. All we're doing is loading that in, but we're not making use of anything yet. 
Now, we could either use Capture and add our connections and boot Eloquent inside of this init.php file, or we could do this within another file and then require it in, and that just helps to separate things. So inside of app, let's create a new, fold, uh, new file here called database.php. This is going to contain all of our database-related things. There are probably better ways to structure this in terms of pulling in config, but we're just going to put everything we need in this file uh, just to separate as much as we can. So down here, I'm going to require in database.php like so. So inside of database now, all of that functionality will now work within our application and we can do what we need. What I'm actually going to do is inside of composer.json, I'm going to pull in a class map here. Uh, sorry, auto load. I'm going to pull in a class map. All this means is when we go to use things like the user model or, uh, I don't know, a topic model, whatever you're creating within your models directory, we want these to be auto loaded in so we can use them. And that means that we can use them globally. We can do what we want. So in this case, the class map just contains the uh, directory to your classes. In this case, it's app models. So over in the terminal now, we're going to do a composer dump autoload. And that's going to go ahead and allow us now to use this user class wherever we want. So we can do things like inside of, if we just tidy this up a bit, we can do things like inside of home, for example, we could do user find one or something like that. We can't actually do this at the moment because we're not pulling, we're not setting up uh, eloquent. So inside of database, we need to do that now. Now, capture is obviously namespaced, so we're going to use that namespace here. It's illuminate database capsule manager and we're going to call that capsule. So if you're not familiar with this, it's just basically saying, well, we want to use this namespace as this. And that allows us to do something like the following, capsule equals new capsule. Otherwise, what we'd have to do is we would have to place this namespace just before that, like the following. And you can do that, but it may just makes it a little bit easier, especially if you are namespacing the rest of your application. So now we have this capsule um, instance here. And this basically allow us to do things like add connections and then boot eloquent so we can actually start to use it. So to add our connections, we say capsule, add connection. And there are other things you can do here as well, but we won't be covering these. So we need to do things like define the driver in this case, we want to use MySQL, and I have a database ready. I'll show you that in a moment. We need to choose the host. So all of this should be familiar to you if you've worked with databases before. We also need to select the uh, username, obviously. In this case, my username's root here, and my password is exactly the same. Um, we also need to define the database that we're actually using. In this case, I'm just going to have one called website. I'll just pull this up now. There it is. So we've got all these records in here that I've been creating. So delete them. So we've got four records in there at the moment. And we can set the character encoding. So in this case, it will be UTF-8. And we also want to set the collation as well. In this case, it's UTF-8 Unicode CI. And what you can also do is you can choose a prefix for your tables when you create them. So we could do something like code course underscore but I'm not going to be doing that, so I want to just leave that blank like so. So now what we want to do is we want to say capsule boot eloquent like so. So this won't change a thing. We're still accessing our plain model here. It, it's exactly the same. We're not actually using eloquent at all. Now, if you've worked with Laravel, you'll know that we can extend eloquent. And what this will do is because we're extending Eloquent, this is going to give us all of the functionality that we need to do things within our user model. So, for example, what we can actually do is, if we head back over to our home controller, we can then do things like user find one. That would find a user by the ID of one, and then we could access, say, their username. Or you could do user create, and you could go ahead and choose which username you want to give them. 
and for example which email you wanted to give them but we'll do that in a moment so we've extended eloquent inside of here but we're actually going to get an error now you'll see why in a moment when I refresh here, we see class eloquent not found. Now, the reason it can't be found is because there's no class called eloquent. It's namespaced. So again, we need to say use illuminate. But this time we're going to say database eloquent, not capsule. We've used capsule to pull in this and, and connect and everything. And we're going to be using the model class. And we'll use that as eloquent like so. So now we have this eloquent uh, model available. And when we refresh, we get the same result. But again, we're still not doing anything useful for this, uh, with this because all we're doing is inside of our home controller, we're just uh, grabbing the model, setting the name on that public um, property and rendering the view. So I'm going to create a new method here. I'm going to call this create. And this is going to take a username, which is going to be blank by default. And it's going to take an email. Now, this is not a great way to, for example, create a user account. We wouldn't do home create alex, alex at cocourse.com. This is the username to be inserted, and this is the email to be inserted. We wouldn't do this. But in this case, we'll leave this as an example. And what we'll do is inside of here, we'll use Eloquent now to create that actual um, record. So we need to do a little bit of tidying here because we've got this model being loaded in here, but I want to load this in the constructor. So we're going to say public function construct. You don't have to do this. I'll show you the alternative way in a moment. And up here, we'll create a protected user property. And all we're going to do inside of construct is this user equals this model user, like so. And we can, in this case, get rid of this if we wanted to, or just say this user like that. So this is going to work exactly the same when we go onto our home index and pass a um, parameter through here. But now we're going to test out the create uh, here. So what we can actually do now is we can say this user, and then we can use the methods that are available to us with eloquent. So create, for example. So in here, we can now do create and say username is username and email is email so now this is going to use whatever's on the user model which in our case we have access to that eloquent stuff and it's going to create it except it's not because we need to adjust a few more things so let's go to home create and let's create a, a new record altogether So this, remember, is the username we're passing into that uh, method, and this is the email. So when I hit enter, we unfortunately get an error, and this is because we have a mass assignment exception. Now, within Eloquent, this uh, basically forces you, which is good, to provide which fields that you want to be fillable. So all we do here is we say, in fact, let's keep that public name there. All we do is we say protected fillable, and then we give it an array with the fillable fields that we want to protect ourselves against mass assignment. So in this case, it's username and email. So we're inserting a username and an email, they're now allowed. However, we're also going to get another error. And this is column not found updated at. Now, if you've not worked with Eloquent before, you uh, need to know that what it will do is when you're creating a record, it will automatically assume the inside of your database table here, so this is the structure, you have a created at, which is a timestamp, and an updated at, which is also a timestamp. And the reason for this is it's, it's extremely useful because when you create a record, created at will automatically be populated for you. When you edit a uh, record, um, so, for example, if I edited this, the updated app field would be created as well, or updated rather. So we can either insert these if we need them, or if you don't need them, you can create a timestamps property and set that to an empty array. Otherwise, you could do things like created at and updated at, but in this case, there's no need to do this. 
So we're just going to get rid of these and say, well, we're not including timestamps here. So if we hit enter on that now, that should have created that record for us. So when we go ahead to content and refresh, we've now got that record in there. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like if we do want the timestamps in there. So let's head over to our code or, or our database. Uh, we've already got these in here. So when we create this again now, where we head over to our database, over to content, you can see that that's automatically created these. So I mentioned earlier that we have an easier way of doing this if you don't want to pull in all this constructor. There's no real need to do this with Eloquent. What we can do is we can get rid of all of this and instead we can access the user model like this with a static method. So this means that we uh, remove the need to have to pull in this using our model method. So I'm just going to get rid of, uh, let's get rid of this. And there we go, we've created another record exactly the same. So we've just used the static create method here with the user model like so. So that's how easy it is to use Eloquent with inside of another application. And if you've never used Eloquent, you now know how to update your small MVC application to use Eloquent's database functionality. And this is a lot easier than say, injecting in a PDO instance, because now you've got all of the rich functionality that Eloquent provides. And like I said, if you've not used Eloquent, you can head over to the Laravel documentation and read about everything here just to make sure you completely understand how to use it. And it is really straightforward. So that's how we add database support to our MVC application.